Good morning, good afternoon, good evening everyone. Today I will present my paper, What's in the User? The Wired's Personalizing Transparency for Music Recommender Interfaces. Before I start explaining my paper, I will introduce myself and my co-authors. I am Martijn Willekamp from the Augment Group at Terry Leuven, Belgium, and these are my co-authors. My colleague, Nini, Professor Christina Konati from the University of British Columbia, and my supervisor, Professor Patrin Verbert. To start my presentation, I go back in time to the famous Shakespeare, who saw a rose and asked, what's in a name? 400 years later, I had a similar question, but I didn't wonder what's in a name and what's in a user, and more specifically, what's in a user that influences the perception of transparency for music recommender interfaces. As I know that keeping your focus during online presentations can be hard, I will start with explaining what we have learned in the study before I tell how we learned these things. In our study, we learned three main things. First, we have seen that explanations should be scrutable in order to enable users to steer the recommendation process. Regarding this steering, we have seen that there is a difference between expert and novice users. Expert users are already able to steer the recommendations and thus feel more supported when explanations are available. This is not the case for novice users who are less confident and thus require from explanations that they should help them to learn how to steer the recommendation process towards the right user. Second, we learn that people with a low openness require explanations to help them to look for specific music, while users with a high openness require from explanations that they help to explore multiple kinds of music. Third, we learned that there is a different case pattern between expert and novice users and between users with a low and high openness. This shows the potential to use gaze data during the interaction with the recommender system to model the user and maybe even to adapt the explanations on the fly to the needs of the user. So I have explained what we learned. In the next parts, I will present why we did the study, how we did the study, and what the results were. So let's start with the why part. Well, maybe you have also noticed that recommender systems are everywhere in our lives. They recommend friends, jobs, hotels, movies, things to buy, and the music you should listen to. But as these systems become increasingly important in our lives, we also want to know how these systems work. This understanding is important because it helps users to trust the system or to adjust the system if it's wrong. There have been various studies which explain the internal reasoning of the system and then show the advantages of this transparency and combination of control known as scrutability. A first example is peer choosing, which shows the relation between recommendations and similar users. It also gives the user the control to move nodes closer or further from the center to increase its weight and calculate the recommendation. The second example is small worlds, which explains recommendations by showing several layers of similarity and which has similar interactions to peer tutor, where you can drag and drop persons to give different weight. The third example is beyond ranked list, in which users were able to control the recommendation process to explore the recommendations by so showing them in a spectrum. For the last example, we go to the field of music recommendations. This interface, called Taste Trades, allows users to give rates to different songs and explain the recommendations in terms of context, friends, and extra. However, one limitation of these studies is that they all show the same interface to all users. Isn't that strange? that we are also different, but that we all see the same interface, explained in the same way, with the same controls? Despite that there is evidence that personal characteristics influence the way we perceive and use recommender system interfaces? One of the studies that investigated in which way personal characteristics influence the perception of a music recommender system was a study that compared two visualizations, an advanced scatter plot and a simple bubble chart. The study showed that users with a high musical sophistication received higher diversity in the advanced scatterplot than in the center bubble chart. 
Another study investigated the effect of cognitive style on the preference for kinds of explanations and found that mostly intuitive thinkers rely on argumentative explanations. Additionally, a similar study investigated if this effect of cognitive style was different in different domains and found that the moderating effect of cognitive style was only present in the music domain and not in a more high risk domain. So, in this study, we want to combine these two fields by investigating the effect of personal characteristics on explanations in the music recommender system. To the best of our knowledge, there is only one study which did something similar and who found that cognitive style affects the perception of explanations. More concrete, they found that especially users with low need for cognition have more confidence in their choices when they have explanations. This study is different from our study because we investigate different personal characteristics and because we will investigate the gaze pattern of users during the interaction with the recommender system to understand better differences between users. We are not the first to use eye tracking to investigate attention in recommender system interface, but to our knowledge, we are the first to use eye tracking to investigate the attention to explanation. One study in the field of recommender systems that used eye tracking showed recommendation based on the element users were looking at. And another study showed that by organizing recommendations in a different layout, more recommendations get attention. So, to conclude, as research shows that there is no one size fits all transparent interface and it is not clear how to personalize these explanations, we investigated the effect of more of personal characteristics on the perception of explanations and provide deeper insight in these differences by using eye tracking. So now that we know why I did it, I will explain what I did. To test the effect of explanations in the music recommender system interface, the first thing that I did was to implement two interfaces on top of the recommender system API in Spotify. The way this API works is that Spotify can give you a list of recommendations based on a similar artist and based on several target audio features. In the interface, this is shown in part B and D. To give users an idea about the audio features of the artist they selected, we calculated for each audio feature the minimum and maximum value based on his or her uh, five most popular songs, which is sound shown in part C. In the middle, in part E, we, we repeated the task, and underneath, we show 12 recommendations. Each recommendation is shown by a cover picture, the name, and the song of the artist. By hovering over the picture, a play button appears, and users were able to play a 30-second preview of the song. In the interface with explanations, bar charts indicate the range of the audio features that the user selected, and the white line indicates the value of the song for that audio feature. In the interface without explanations, this part is the same. By clicking on the like button, the song was added to a playlist that was visible on the right side and on the screen. So how did I run this experiment? In the initial phase, users were informed of the experiment, given an informed consent, and asked to fill in some questionnaires to obtain, obtain their personal characteristics. The characteristics we investigated were need for cognition, musical sophistication, and the big five personality traits. After they filled in this questionnaire, they go to the preparation phase, in which I calibrated the eye tracker, and users could get themselves familiar with the audio features and select the audio features they would like to control. We used a Toby 4C remote eye tracker on a 27-inch display with a sampling rate of 90 Hz. After this phase, users were asked for both interfaces to explore the interface, create a playlist in that interface, and then to evaluate the interface. To evaluate the interface, we measured six different perception methods. Recommended effectiveness, perceived novelty, good understanding, user intention, choice satisfaction, trust, confidence, and decision support. Additionally, we measured three different eye tracking measures. Attention and recommendation, gaze transition entropy, and gaze stationary entropy. 
case transition entropy measures the amount of information that is available in a transition, which means that this is the highest if the transition probability is the same to all areas of the interface. Case stationary entropy is a similar metric, but it measures the amount of information that is in a fixation on a certain area. The highest stationary entropy is reached if you focus equally on all parts of the interface. In the final phase, users were given a cinema ticket as an award for doing the study. In total, 30 participants finished the study, which took one hour on average. So finally, we are at the most interesting part. How did these users evaluate the interfaces? We will start with the most unexpected result, which was that there was no effect for need for cognition. In the previous study, who found an effect for need for cognition, explanations were only visible after explicitly asking for it. In our study, the explanations were always visible, so we assume that this non-existence of an effect might be due to the amount of effort users need to do before they see explanations. If they need to click a button, need for cognition moderates the perception of explanations. But if explanations are always present, need for cognition does not moderate that perception. A second result is that out of the big five personality traits, we found only a significant interaction effect for openness. We found that users with low openness find less novel songs in the interface with explanations, but they reported a higher use intention for this interface. This indicates that low openness users want to discover less novel songs and that the explanations help them to find the songs they want. For high openness users, we found that explanations help them to find more novel songs and that they need to spend less attention to the recommendations, but that does not result in a different user intention. We assume that explanations already help high openness users to find novel songs, but that the explanation should even more support exploration of novel recommendations. For musical sophistication, we see that explanations help expert users to feel more supported, which also results in a higher transitional entropy than novice users. A higher transitional entropy means that they have a less fixed transition path between different areas of the interface and are more confident. This could indicate expert users are already more able to steer the, the process and that explanations help them to take decisions. For low music sophistication, it is interesting to see that they fixate less on recommendations and the interface with explanations, even as there is more to see. A possible explanation for this might be that the explanations are too overwhelming and too difficult for them. To make them less overwhelming and difficult, the explanations should be adapted to learn novice users how they can use explanations to steer the recommendation process. So, before we go to the questions, I will give a small recap about our results. First, we learned that explanations help expert users because they feel more supported to take a decision and that novice users could possibly benefit from explanations that help them more to learn how to steer the recommendation process. Second, we learned that low openness users like explanations to look for specific music, and that high openness users could benefit from explanations that support exploring novel recommendations. As third and last, we learned that users with different personal characteristics have different gaze patterns, which shows the potential to use a gaze for on-the-fly user modeling and maybe even on-the-fly adaptation of explanations. Thanks for your attention. <laughs>